Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. Today's video is another tabletop review and comparison of the new SIG P365, the Smith & Wesson Shield 2.0, and I have an original shield here for comparison as well. The XDS Mod 2, this is a 45, the 9mm is not out yet, but it's close enough for uh, purposes of this review. And then the Glock 43. Now, this review is mainly going to focus on the SIG P365, since that's honestly probably why a lot of you are watching. I do have other very detailed videos comparing these firearms with other firearms, so I'm going to use these really in this review as reference points against the new P365 as sort of the standard that we're all used to. But I'm really going to do all the detail on this firearm. Now again, this is our tabletop review and comparison, so this is basically just a look at the features. There is no shooting in this video. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm sorry, uh, we don't have that in this video, but maybe that will come soon. If that all sounds interesting to you, please stick around, that's coming up now. Okay, so I always start these off with an unboxing. Now to save you guys a bunch of time for uh, current subscribers who've seen a lot of our other videos, I'm just gonna do the unboxing on the th SIG 365. I have unboxing on all the other guns in this review, so if you wanna see those, links will be in the description for those reviews as well. But anyway, jumping in here, we do start off with a nice gray hard case, unlike any of other SIG's uh, case products that they put out before. Anyway, jumping in here, you do have these two little rotating clips I will open up and your handgun is right here inside. Now inside the plastic sleeve is the firearm with SIG's empty chamber notification flag there, so I'll go ahead and pull that out. And here is the firearm. Now inserted is one magazine with a fl flat base plate, and this does hold 10 rounds. And over here we have a second magazine, which also holds 10 rounds, but it does have a pinky extension on it. If you have bigger hands and like that pinky extension option, there you go, you have that there. Uh, paperwork, warranty information, and all that is under this uh, foam panel here. Now, if 10 rounds is not enough for you, they also make these. This is an even larger pinky extension, and this holds 12 rounds. So this will bring the profile of the firearm to something like that to give you an idea. Uh, you do give up on concealability, of course, but that 12 round option is there for you. And these mags are retailing at about the 45 to 50 range, just like any other SIG product. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the general specs and overall layout of these four pistols. I will start down here with the Shield 2.0. Now this one does have a Crimson Trace laser built into the frame. Um, I'm gonna give you the specs and just the standard without. The one without is gonna look more like this. This is the old original model, of course. The 2.0, if you wanna know what they changed, I have a video on that, check the description. Uh, so I'm gonna give you more of the stats of this layout, but here's the 2.0. Anyway, the Shield 2.0 weight is 20.8 ounces. It has a height of 4.4 inches with the flush magazine extended. Now, with the extended magazine extended, like you see here, it does have a height of 4.9 inches. The length is 6.1 inches, and it does have a 3.1 inch barrel. Coming up here to the XDS Mod 2, and again, keep in mind this is in 45, but the layout's gonna be pretty much the same as a nine millimeter when it releases. But the height with the extended magazine you see inserted here is five inches. If you put in the compact magazine, the one with the flat floor plate, you are gonna be at about 4.4 inches. The overall length is 6.3 inches, and the overall unloaded weight is 21.5 ounces. The Glock 43 has a barrel length of 3.39 inches and an overall length of 6.26 inches. Its height is 4.25 inches, and it does weigh 17.95 ounces. Coming up here to the SIG 365, it does have a barrel length of 3.1 inches, an overall length of 5.8 inches, an overall height with the flush magazine extended of 4.5 inches and an unloaded weight of 17.5 ounces. So if you do the math, it is actually the lightest. It has the shortest overall length and it has the shortest overall height. Now with that comes the kicker and what makes the P365 so cool is this does have a 10 round capacity, 11 if you carry with one in the pipe or up to 13 rounds if you carry with one in the chamber and you use that extended mag that I showed you just before. In comparison, the Glock 43 holds six rounds as standard. The shield does come with two magazines, one holding seven and one holding eight. And the XDS, now the standard nine millimeter version, I imagine the, the, uh, the, the nine millimeter mod two will be the same 
does come with a seven round and an eight round magazine and you can actually purchase up to the nine round magazine as well. So in summation, we have the lightest, smallest package with the most firepower here. Now going along with that, let's talk about price point. The P365, since they have just released and demand is really high, you are seeing them retail in about the six to 650 range. The Glock does come in at about 450 to 500 respectively on your area. The Shield 2.0 is in about the 420 to 450 range uh, without the laser, a little bit higher with the laser. And then the XDS Mod 2, the 45 here, you're seeing at about the $500 range, maybe a little bit less. The 9mm will probably be the same when it releases. But so you are still paying at the high end, you are still paying the most for the 365. I am guessing that this is going to come down more to the 5 550 range when they actually get supply out and everybody and demand sort of settles down. Okay, so let's move in into talking about the slides. I will start off with the P365. So the P365 does use a machined stainless steel slide with a nitron finish. You will notice that there are slide serrations in the back and up here on the front. Of course, if you want to do any of that press checking. Your extractor is located here. It's, it's exposed. You can see it on the exterior of the firearm. Moving up to the top, you do have a loaded chamber indicator and here are your sights. The sights are metal in construction and they are both dovetailed in place, so they are windage adjustable but they are not elevation adjustable. Moving along to this side, it looks just like the other side of the slide. You do have these little bevels in the front which will aid you in getting the firearm into a holster. Also you do have the P365 graphics there. Getting into the sights, these do use the Romeo X-Ray 3 sights like we saw on the X-Carry P320. They are what are known as day-night sights, so they do illuminate in the dark. And you have this little uh, kind of fiber optic-esque, it's not a fiber optic, but you have this little ring up here that circles the insert, the night sight insert, if you will. So it actually gives you more visibility during the day as well. Very nice sights. Now the Glock 43 also has a machined slide and it does have rear slide serrations but nothing up here at the front. The front end is not beveled like it is on the Glock 26 or the P365. You have your Glock roll markings and caliber markings here on this side. Moving over to this side as well, you do just have rear slide serrations and here's your extractor which does double as a loaded chamber indicator. It is a tactile system. So when there's a round in the chamber, this will extend a little bit outward which you can feel if it's, if it's extended out, you know you have a round in the chamber. Up at the top, it's a very simple. You do have your polymer sights dovetailed in the rear for windage adjustments but not for elevation. And your front sight is sort of, it does have a little hex screw underneath, which you can use a hex wrench, a style of hex wrench, if you will, or a Glock tool to remove the screw from underneath the slide to do a replacement on the front sight. The sights themselves are in a U-dot configuration, which is very kind of indicative and common of a Glock firearm. You usually see this on all of their products. But of course, you can buy them with factory night sights or you can do a sight uh, replacement yourself. But keep in mind, you will have to bear the additional cost of that. Here's the XDS Mod 2, which does use a steel forged slide with a melanite finish or treatment to it. You do have rear side serrations, but nothing up at the front. But there are little bevels up here at the front end, like the 365. Here's are roll markings and uh, barrel length marking here. Now, the original XDSs did also come in a four inch. I, I assume that they might do that when they roll out. Uh, when they get more production on the Mod 2 here. Uh, currently, I don't believe, I'll put an annotation, I don't believe they have a four inch version out for the Mod 2. Slide serrations here in the back. Again, your kind of external extractor here, uh, and then your more of your roll marking Springfield Armory there. Now up at the top, you will see a loaded chamber indicator. This will lift when there is a round in the chamber and you have your rear and front sights, which are metal in construction and which are both dovetailed into the slide. So they are adjustable for windage, but not elevation. Your front sight is a high-vis fiber optic. It does have the red fiber insert, but it does come with a green one if you wanna switch that out. Also, your sights are in a three dot configuration, but they are not night sights. And with the Shield 2.0, you also have a machined stainless steel slide with the uh, Smith & Wesson Armo Knight finish, which is very similar, if not the same thing as the Melonite treatment we saw on the Springfield product. Fish scale slide serrations in the back, and then they've added them up here at the front too. This is one of the changes they made on the 2.0. Roll marking and caliber markings here. On this side as well, you do have your exposure external extractor. Uh, your slide serrations here in the front and the back as well. Now up at the top, you do have a loaded chamber indicator similar to what we saw in the 365. So when you have a round chamber, you can see the brass through there. Sorry, I'm going out of focus. Uh, but again, remember you'll need some daylight to be able to see that. 
Uh, rear and front sights are metal in construction and they are dovetailed in place, so they are windage adjustable, but not elevation adjustable. And they are in a three dot configuration. These are not night sights, although you can get them with night sights. Now let's go ahead and talk about the trigger. And again, moving into this segment, all of these have obviously been safety checked. Starting off with the Glock, it, the trigger is polymer in construction. It does have that little tab safety there, drop safety, whatever you want to call it. Starting off and giving it a pull, you have a little bit of take up there, what some people call a little bit spongy. You get past that take up and you get to that nice clean wall. And if we go ahead and pull through, you get that nice break. Go ahead and release and show you the reset. Reset right there into a nice clean break. And you're looking at about six to six and a half pounds. Okay, now taking a look at the XDS Mod 2, it is a polymer trigger, which does have a little trigger safety, just like on the Glock. If we go ahead and start to give it a pull, there's a little bit more travel than on the Glock, but a little bit less sponginess as well, a little bit easier, less creep. But you get there, you get to that wall, you start giving it a little bit of a pull, and right there, again, a little bit of travel past the wall. Goes into a nice break. Now the trigger will stay to the rear until it resets, just like on the Glock. After the reset, we'll go ahead and release. Resets right there. Feels about the same reset distance than on the Glock. Go ahead and give it a pull. Again, very similar at about six, six and a half pounds. Now, taking a look at the Shield 2.0, there's also a trigger safety, but it is in the style of this hinge here. And uh, there is a, uh, it is polymer in construction. You do see a little over travel stop there in the back. But we go ahead and take up that, that take up there. It is uh, a little bit gritty, grittier than the other two. You get to that wall, go ahead and give it a pull and a break, actually much smoother, I think, and cleaner break uh, than the other two. And again, you're looking at about five and a half pounds. And then showing you the reset, we'll go ahead and start releasing. Right there is the reset, again, very similar to the other two. Now the P365 does have a metal trigger. It looks very much like the trigger on the P226 or anything like that. It's sort of stamped and rolled around. But anyway, there is no form of trigger safety like the other three. There's your take up, very smooth, uh, no, no grittiness or no sponginess there, just moves to the wall. You start pulling from that point, virtually no travel and virtually no over travel either and a very nice smooth break at about five and a half pounds. Showing you the reset. Right there, so reset a little bit shorter than on the other three, a little bit of, uh, well, let's do that again. Clean break. and reset. So I would say the break and the, the kind of the pre-travel to that wall better than on the other three. The reset is roughly about the same. That's just my opinion here. Now let's look at disassembly really quick. So here is the Glock. Start by removing the firearm, check that you're clear, and then go ahead and fire or drop the striker. Pull back, there are these two little tabs. Pull down and release. That brings the frame from the slide. You do have a double guide rod and spring system barrel and slide and that's your field strip. Shield 2.0, go ahead and start by dropping the mag and checking that you're clear. Lock the slide open to the rear and then push the takedown lever down to about the six o'clock. This one's really stiff. Just like that, go ahead and release. And I go ahead and pull the trigger to drop the striker. I know that there's a manual way to do that, but that's just the way I do it. Double guide rod and spring in here as well. Barrel drops out just like on the Glock and that's field strip. Moving into the XDS Mod 2, start by dropping the magazine and checking we're clear and we are. Start with the slide locked open. There is a takedown lever here, which I will move into the six, I guess, pointing down to the six o'clock position. You can then go ahead and release the slide carefully, pull the trigger and then remove the slide from the frame. Go ahead and remove the double guide rod and spring and barrel from the slide, and that is field strip. Okay, and then with the P365, start by removing the magazine and checking we're clear, and we are. Start with it in the open and locked position, and then go ahead and move the takedown lever down into the six o'clock position so it's pointing upward to the 12. You can then go ahead and release the slide. Now, without needing to pull the trigger or drop any type of striker or anything, you can just go ahead and push the uh, slide off the frame. Here is your double guide rod and spring, just like the other four. Barrel lifts out, just like the other four, and you are field stripped. Now, the frame on the P365, starting with the grip texture, is actually very nice. It does have kind of a soft grit, sandpapery type feel. With one finger groove here, 
one for your finger sitting in here, then just kind of an open uh, bottom of the base down here. Now remember, with that standard magazine inserted, your pinky, well, I mean, I have relatively small hands, so I can actually, sorry about the focus there. I can actually get all of my hand on there. It's a little bit tight. Now, if I insert the extended magazine that it comes with, that's way more comfortable to me. Remember, this does not give you any added capacity, but it just gives you a little bit more room there, which is perfect for my small to medium sized hands. Now, again, you can get that extended magazine I showed you, which gives you two plus rounds and brings your grip down to about here. Moving on, here is your magazine release, which is already set up for a right-handed shooter. If you are a left-handed shooter, fear not, because you can move it over to the other side. It is reversible. Now, your trigger guard does have plenty of room in here if you're going to be wearing winter gloves or anything like that. And you do have the little SIG tack rail down here at the bottom for mounting any of your SIG lights, lasers, or anything like that. Now, the chassis system is stainless steel. They advertise it as being similar to the chassis system in a P320, but it is not removable. Well, I will say it's pinned in place so you can remove it, but you can't do it quickly like you can on the P320. It's not a modular system. I did call SIG and confirm that with them. In fact, they even said they recommend you don't do that unless you're an armor or something like that. But anyway, you will notice that your controls on the firearm are pretty simple. You have a mag release, a slide stop, and a takedown lever. This uh, system is void of any type of safety feature. The XDS Mod 2 is also polymer in construction and it has similar texturing on the front and back straps but is relatively clean in here in the middle. You do have the two finger grooves here similar to the 365 and a little cutout here for your index finger or I guess it would be your, uh, what is that, my middle finger, uh, the most important one. Uh, your magazine release is uh, ambidextrous, it's on both sides and does have a good amount of spring tension to it and a, a nice sort of texturing as well. You do have a grip safety here and a trigger safety here like I mentioned in the trigger demonstration. Those both must be depressed simultaneously for the firearm to fire. It does have a rail system here. Now your controls other than that are the takedown lever and the slide stop which are not ambidextrous obviously or the, the slide stop is really what I meant to say. All of your internal parts are steel in construction, uh, just like they would need to be, uh, pretty standard and straightforward. The Shield 2.0 grip texture is a little bit more aggressive than on the other two, and that's one of the main complaints people have with this, is that if you're doing inside the waistband carry and you're, and you're not doing wearing like an undershirt between you and the firearm, this can be a little bit aggressive and, and sort of chafe on your skin. There's been plenty of reports of that online. Uh, uh, magazine release is not reversible, so it is only really set up for a right-handed shooter only. Your controls are also not ambidextrous at all. Uh, your internal components are steel in construction. Here's your takedown lever, slide stop, and safety. You can get this without a manual safety if you prefer. Keep in mind you still have that trigger safety there. Now this one has a built-in Crimson Trace laser unit. You can get this, of course, without the laser unit, so it would look more like that. There's where you can see you can change the battery compartment and everything like that if that's something you're interested in. And the Glock 43, also polymer in construction. It's probably got the least aggressive amount of texture out of all of them. No finger grooves or anything like that. A little bit of a beaver tail here in the back. A magazine release, pretty, it's large, but it's a low profile and it is reversible. So if you are left-handed, you can switch that over to the other side. Your internal components are steel in construction, your guide, guide rails and anything like that. Uh, you do not have any type of manual safety, which is very indicative of Glock products, but keep in mind you do have a trigger safety there. There is no rails or provisions for accessories, so probably the most basic and straightforward out of all four. And finishing up with the barrels, up here at the top I have the P365. This is the XDS Mod 2. Again, keep in mind this is a 45 caliber gun. Uh, this is the Smith & Wesson Shield 2.0 and then the Glock 43. So starting up here with the SIG P365, Again, the barrel length is 3.1 inches and it is a stainless steel barrel with a DLC coating and a one and 10 twist. Bringing it in closer for you, you will see there is no polishing on the feed ramp, but that's pretty normal, that's fine. There is a cutout for your uh, opening in the top as your loaded chamber indicator. Uh, very standard, basic, straightforward, looks just like most of the other guns in his class. XDS Mod 2 is a cold hammer forged barrel and it does have a melanite treatment just like the slide. You will see that the feed ramp on here is polished, which is a nice added feature. The twist rate, of course, this is a 45. The twist rate on the 9mm will most likely be 1 in 10. And then there is a little cutout as your loaded chamber indicator up at the top. Or actually, that's clearance for the loaded chamber indicator lever that lifts up when the chamber is loaded. The Smith & Wesson Shield is a 3.1 inch barrel as well. It is stainless steel and it does use a Armonite or that melanite-esque treatment on it. 
bringing it in close you will see it does have a polished polished feed ramp and the little cutout as your loaded chamber indicator up at the top and the caliber designation as well. Last but not least is the Glock 43 which does have a 3.4 inch barrel. It has a machined barrel with the um, gas nitride finish on it. Does It does not have a polished feed ramp just like all the other Glock products. Again very simple not much more to say about it. Well, that is all the time I have for you today on this. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this out. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that little bell for, for future notifications. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section. I've been glad to see that we've had a lot of really smart people uh, kind of hang around comment section helping answering questions or clarify anything that I may have left out. Uh, so guys, thank you so much again for stopping by. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com out of Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.